Los Angeles, which you may know as a thriving metropolis in the hub of the west coast of the United States, is actually the United States version of Saudi Arabia, as in it's been actively producing oil for the country for the last 130 years. The LA oil boom spawned a whole metropolis, but also brought in an underworld that included disasters, contamination, murder, and corruption at the highest levels as well as the health danger that still exists today with the trapped methane gas. Most of this crucial history is forgotten or unspoken because when you think of LA, oil is in the first thing that comes to mind, but in fact, it's what built the city and made it a stronghold name worldwide. So let's dive into it. Backstories, ladies and gentlemen. Edward L. Doheny, that's the man responsible for transforming Los Angeles. He became the largest oil tycoon at the time and also inspired a movie called There Will Be Blood, where they actually used his very own home, the infamous Greystone Mansion, in the movie. The California oil boom itself began in the 1860s after the gold rush, as prospectors also found the black gold, aka oil. Doheny would partner up with Charles A. Canfield and come to LA where in 1892 they would strike oil where Dodger Stadium stands today and surprisingly the well itself is still operating to this very day. But this discovery would make Doheny and Canfield two of the richest men on the planet and send LA into an oil boom where within just five years they had over 500 different wells and thousands by the turn of the century in 1900, with well over 200 different oil companies operating, and it was considered the world's largest producer of oil like Saudi Arabia is today. This would drive LA's population from 50,000 to a whole 1.2 million people by just 1930. The city itself would turn sludgy as well, with oil leaks on the streets from redwood oil tanks which overflowed, as well as the well-known La Brea Tar Pits which has been around for thousands of years preserving fossils, but it has constant spills into the streets because the pits are composed of heavy oil fractions called gilsonite, which seeps up from the earth's soil. So the crude oil would seep up into the street on six, which still happens to this day from time to time. It's slow moving, almost like a lazy river that sometimes bubbles up, releasing methane gas from underground. It's seepage that's been happening for tens of thousands of years. It's kind of crazy and kind of scary to think I live on top of this. In Canfield, who had a bunch of different ventures, eventually reorganized his business in 1902 to the Rodeo Land and Water Company that developed the city of Beverly Hills, where he would die of a stroke eventually in his own mansion at a board meeting in 1913. Doheny, however, would continue to expand his empire with his son, where at one point he was actually the richest man in the world and even had international oil companies in Mexico and South America as well. Crimes of all kinds was also a big problem during this time as thieves of rival companies would actually drain out oil tanks such as the incident that happened at the man-made lake at Echo Park, which was near an oil tanker that got drained right into the lake and the lake caught on fire for three whole days in 1907. And yeah, that's still the same lake that's there today. There was also a lot of murder and scamming going on, as well as the biggest scandal at the time, including Doheny and the 29th US president himself, Warren G. Harding, in the 1920s, and it became known as the Teapot Dome Scandal. The president and his administration would accept bribes from Doheny, where the Secretary of Interior, Albert Fall, was actually caught and convicted of accepting $100,000 under the table from Doheny to use naval-owned land in Wyoming, where Doheny's son and his assistant, Hugh Plunkett, personally delivered the money. The president himself would actually die during the investigation before he was implemented in it. And Doheny's son Ned and assistant Plunkin would be put on trial where they would be found dead in Doheny's Greystone mansion. So in 1929, Ned Doheny Jr. was shot dead in his own home as well as Hugh Plunkett right before they were set to testify on trial. Although the original report says Plunkett went crazy and did a murder-suicide, some rumors have said that it was an ordered hit since Plunkett himself was shot in the back of the head execution style, and that's highly unlikely in a suicide, and this directly results in Edward Doheny himself being acquitted of all his charges. 
There was also rumors that Ned and Plunkett were having an affair with each other and they were arguing right before the shots were heard. But again, just seems like a big cover up at the highest level. Doheny himself was no stranger to death in the family, where his own daughter actually died at seven years old from heart disease and lung infection from what seems to have happened with all the unhealthy conditions she was around, which then resulted to his first wife divorcing him and supposedly killing herself in 1899, and all that seems fishy as well. And although Doheny was acquitted, he was sued by his stockholders and had to pay out $47 million in settlements and his reputation never recovered. He was pretty much a recluse for the remaining years of his life where he died in 1935 and left around $85 million to his then wife at the time who ended up dying in 1958 and the rest of her fortune went to some Catholic church. There was also one of the biggest stock market scams of all time called the Julian Oil Scandal started by C.C. Julian who was a huge fraud and fleeced the lay people out of a hundred million dollars on his fraudulent company and manipulated the stock where in 1927 trade was halted on and many people lost their life savings. Julian himself would flee and start other scams while others would take the fall and one financer would actually be shot dead in a courtroom by a man who also lost his life savings. Julian would eventually kill himself on the run in China by poisoning himself, or someone poisoned him, who knows. So with all the scandals and murder now leading into the Great Depression, the oil production would actually continue to expand throughout the 30s, where the Wilmington oil field will be built in 1932 and become known as the largest urban oil field in the U.S., as well as offshore sites in Long Beach and Huntington Beach. The Long Beach oil field itself, however, was considered to have the richest oil on the planet, so it would drill real deep, well below 2,000 feet, with the deepest well actually reaching nearly 15,000 feet. And scientists would say they would hit a fault line that caused the Long Beach killer quake of 1933 that killed 120 people and resulted in $40 million worth of damages. And let's remember, this was during the Depression, so $40 million back then, that was close to a good billion today. But despite all that, the drilling continued and continues to this very day. And wells will be built along the coast, which you may know today as the Venice Beach Boardwalk, was actually all oil wells in the 30s, and it spilled into the waterways in the ocean, causing major pollution. So if you thought the water looks dirty today, it was much worse 90 years ago. They would eventually drop off the production in the 70s and make that crazy boardwalk. Also, the Inglewood oil field in particular which was made in 1924 had a series of disasters. In the 40s, 16 tanks exploded spewing fires into a nearby trailer park where three people were killed and 17 were hospitalized. Then in 1949, a steam boiler tank farm exploded throwing 100 pound chunks of metal all over the air. And in 1952, a well explosion shot flames hundreds of feet into the air where debris would fly all over the place and residents had to scatter and flee for safety where the fire raged for three whole days nonstop and oil experts from Texas had to come out just to stop it. Then, in 1963, the Baldwin Hills Dam disaster happened due to the oil drilling at the Inglewood Field. The dam gave out and flooded the whole area, resulting in five deaths and the destruction of 277 homes. The asphalt and concrete lined wall of the earth-filled dam of the Baldwin Hills Reservoir. The water fills the 50-foot deep catch basin below the lip of the dam, and millions of gallons of water race down the canyon toward the homes below in the community between downtown Los Angeles and International Airport. These spectacular scenes are made from a KTLA helicopter. They show a wall of water, 30 feet high and 100 feet across, sweep homes, everything in its path, wiping hillside terraces smooth as though with a giant mop. Almost 300 million gallons of water in 77 minutes. An incredible disaster. And the Inglewood oil field continues to operate to this very day next to the residential communities who have been fighting to shut it down because of the health risks it poses. So close you can see you can touch the, the window and the wall at the same time. Beyond this wall, an oil drilling site. We thought it was a construction site for a long time because we didn't know that this sort of thing happened. But uh, I guess there's oil here? Yeah, there's oil. 
Los Angeles is home to the largest urban oil field in the country. There are almost 800 active wells in the city of Los Angeles and almost 4,000 in L.A. County. Which leads us to the modern-day problem of methane gas stuck in the wells on the ground. L.A. has had a long history of leaking gas problems. One of the biggest came from the Salt Lake oil field, which is directly under what today is known as the Grove. The tar pits are located right here. This is Television City, and this is where the explosion took place at Ross Close for Less. There's an old map showing the area. This is 3rd Street. Tighter, tighter. This is La Brea. Yeah. And every one of these black dots in the area indicates yeah. an abandoned oil well. In 1985, methane gas would actually rise up into a Ross store on 3rd and Fairfax and cause a whole explosion inside the store and it injured 23 people. So tremendous, it was felt for blocks. But the continuing fire indicated that leaking gas still posed a danger. Authorities evacuated the entire commercial strip on 3rd Street from Fairfax to the east a quarter mile. Into the night, the area of the explosion remained outlined by a ring of fire, burning gas bubbling up through the concrete. At least two store employees are still missing. This derailed LA subway plans and raised a real concern with residents about the methane. Beverly Hills would actually cover up the wells, like the Tower of Hope which sat on the high school. And there's actually an active well right behind the Beverly Center. And an office building hiding 52 wells right in plain sight in the middle of Wilshire. And they hide these things from the richer residents so they don't complain. You notice something else when you visit these urban drilling sites? Take this downtown neighborhood. It has the second lowest household income levels in the city. 70% of the residents are non-white. It's a very clear racist. Go west, she tells me, to the richer areas. So I do, starting in Beverly Hills. Unlike the downtown ones, this drilling site is totally covered. The next one is even better disguised. First, I couldn't find it, but you can see it there. It just looks like an office building, no windows. The entire pumping operation is totally hidden, so it's not an eyesore. And as you can see, it's totally enclosed, so it prevents pollution. It's a big difference. A report by the NAACP released this week found that African Americans are exposed to 38% more polluted air than white Americans because so many of them live so close to oil and gas operations. Residents would also catch cancers and illnesses. Okay. Recently, we compiled data from the state of California and discovered that a lot of California's oil is particularly dirty and in fact, in some places, is um, dirtier and more energy intensive even than Canadian tar sands. And drilling itself has huge impacts. It can release um, hydrogen sulfides. Those can cause burning lungs, um, nausea, nosebleeds, dizziness. It releases benzene and other similar chemicals that are carcinogen. Where they were forced Beverly Hills to take down the Tower of Hope in 2017. However, many more wells are covered up all over the place and the county will continue to get lawsuits and complaints from the residents. Such as in Echo Park where they effectively shut down the Allen Company wells, which was ordered to pay out 1.25 million civil fines in 2016. But the biggest health hazard would actually happen in Porter Ranch in the San Fernando Valley around the same area where we just covered the Santa Susana Field Lab and it leads me to think that the area is really cursed. In 1968, the first gas leak happened with a damaged Getty Own oil well that burned days on end before it was contained. But the damage had been done with hazardous gases getting released on the northwestern part of the San Fernando Valley. Aliso Canyon was an oil field until the early 1970s, when the field was purchased by SoCal Gas and converted into a gas storage facility. The purpose of the gas storage facility was to ensure natural gas availability to meet variable demand throughout the year for Southern California customers. SS-25 was one of about 117 wells. It was originally drilled in 1953 and served as an oil producer until 1973. The production casing was cemented to approximately 7,000 feet, and the surface casing was supposed to be cemented to the surface at the time of the original well construction in 1954. 
1973, the oil well was converted to a gas storage well. During injection and withdrawal, gas flowed through both tubing and casing. And in 2015, it would happen again, known as the worst natural gas leak in U.S. history. Hydrocarbon gas with CO2 seeped through some of the 7-inch casing connections. CO2 likely was a nutrient for the microbes. The shallow groundwater corroded the outer diameter of the exposed surface casing. The SS-25 well was operating in injection mode the morning of October 23, 2015. The thinned location at the 892-foot depth could not withstand the pressure inside the casing. After the local bulging, the corroded location suffered an axial rupture. The gas escaping from the 7-inch rupture caused the outside diameter corrosion on the 11 and 3 quarter inch to fail, which then caused the gas to escape to the sides of the hill and onto the surface. Due to gas expansion, the temperature in the region local to the 7-inch rupture plummeted. Material toughness reduced, which then resulted in a circumferential parting failure that happened within hours of the axial rupture. SoCal Gas Company, which ran the well, would cover up the leak for a whole week before letting the public know that it was contaminating the air with the estimated 97,000 tons of methane and 7,300 tons of ethane that leaked all into the atmosphere from the Alice Canyon storage facility. And once the public finally knew about it, a state of emergency was declared and 800 homes were evacuated. It would also take five long months to This was the first seen. time the density was changed substantially, and the well briefly appeared to be under control. However, operational issues compromised this attempt, and the well continued to flow. Relief well drilling started on December 4, 2015. On February 11, 2016, the relief well intersected the failed well and stopped the leak. SS-25 was permanently sealed many experienced illnesses as well as their pets and it would lead to lawsuits where the SoCal gas company itself would take a plea deal on a petty misdemeanor charge of failing to report the leak on time and a four million dollar fine which is nothing to them and it took all the way till recently in September 2021 to reach a settlement to pay out 1.8 billion to over 36,000 people affected and that's still getting away with murder because just like the Santa Susana field lab incident these health cases are still rising by the year and the money distributed is just not enough for the amount of people who have been affected. The largest methane gas leak in U.S. history. A cocktail of polytoxins and crude oil. Now has a price tag. Without admitting faults, SoCal Gas will compensate those put in its path with close to $2 billion. The only way that Semper or any other utility understands anything is in the pocketbook. And this is about holding them accountable. Matt, is this the end? Today's an insult. With his girlfriend battling breast cancer and facing his own medical issues, Matt Pacuco says he and his neighbors have suffered. The settlement, it's... it's doesn't even pay most people's um, hospital bills from the first few weeks of the blowout, let alone the seven months of devastation. And whether it's lingering health or declining property values or shuttered businesses, some in Porter Ranch say the suffering has never ceased since the Aliso Canyon facility started leaking in October of 2020. I myself lived around the area and all the gas company sent me at the time was an air humidifier, so I'm concerned for my long-term health as well. Also, they continue to operate in the Aliso Canyon site to this day, and everyone wants the place shut down. That is why the organization Save Porter Ranch and its founder, Matt Pacuco, say this will not end until Aliso is shut down permanently. Just get the hell out of our neighborhood. Go do this somewhere else where people don't live. But no government official has yet to step in and do the right thing. And I don't expect them anytime soon either because they still profit off. This well could have been successfully killed with heavier kill fluid at higher flow rate. The root causes are risk assessments were not conducted to assess the wells for integrity. Previous casing failures were never investigated. Casing wall thickness inspections were not required by regulations and were not routinely conducted in all wells. 
Well flow rate was underestimated for SS-25, and kill modeling was never conducted prior to kill attempts 1 to 6. Well surveillance system did not exist at Aliso Canyon. The production casing was a single barrier. The current California regulations and current SoCal gas practices address most, if not all, of the root causes. And as these wells and their pipes begin to age and pose risks, just last month the offshore oil pipe built in 1933 busted at the bottom of the ocean off the Huntington Beach coast where a large cargo ship supposedly cracked it with its anchor because of all the shipping delays happening due to the Biden administration. We believe that an anchor from one of these massive container ships snagged a section of that concrete encased steel pipeline causing that crack. What remains in dispute, however, is when the oil company knew about the oil spill and how quickly it took action. This morning, those first images of the cracked pipeline that leaked tens of thousands of gallons of oil into the Pacific. That slim 13-inch crack along the top of the concrete encased steel pipeline. It was located by divers in remotely operated vehicles along a nearly mile-long section of the pipeline. The Coast Guard investigation focusing on the possibility that a ship's anchor caused the spill. The Associated Press revealing that this 1,000-foot-long cargo ship, the Rotterdam Express, made a series of unusual movements while anchored near where the rupture happened. We poured 144,000 gallons of crude oil spilled into the ocean, followed by a slow response as always in these cases where it took a whole day to even begin a cleanup. Friday and Saturday showing a plume of oil twice the size of New York Central Park crowding the Southern California coast. But there are mounting questions about what the oil company, Amplify Energy, knew and when. In an official report, federal regulators have said that alarms indicating a possible leak sounded at the oil company's control room at 2.30 a.m. Saturday morning and that the oil company only informed authorities of the spill 14 hours after it was reportedly first seen by another ship. But the oil company's CEO disputes the government's version. So you're saying you first became aware of an oil spill or leak at 8.09 a.m.? Yes, sir. Fully 14 hours after the spill was first sighted by a ship. We were not aware of a sighting by a ship at 6.09 or whatever, at 6, 8, at 6 p.m. the night before. What went wrong, sir? We will fully participate in the investigation. This and other offshore incidents has harmed the environment substantially and continue to pose risks for the future. Today, there's still well over 3,000 operating oil wells around LA County, and for over a century, no one has stepped in to stop the residential drilling, despite all the incidents and future hazards that still pose threats. The skies behind ivy walls in some of LA's most affluent neighborhoods, the century-old practice of oil drilling in LA County has hit bottom. This is the end of uh, big drilling in LA County. CEO of the Consumer Watchdog Group, Jamie Court, and other environmental advocates have been pushing elected officials at all levels to set standards for the distance oil wells can operate from populated areas. They wanted setbacks of at least 2,500 feet from communities. The LA County Board of Supervisors has gone well beyond setbacks recently voting on plans to eliminate all oil wells in the county. We're on target to have no oil wells operating in L.A. City or L.A. County within five years, which is astonishing. The board passed three motions regarding oil wells in unincorporated L.A. County. The first bans any new drilling and directs the county to start phasing out existing wells. Second, the county will expand a transition strategy task force to move away from fossil fuels and toward more renewable and sustainable energy sources. And lastly, the county wants to clean up and close any idle or dormant wells. So is LA the most toxic major city in the US? I would say without a doubt. And only time will tell where the current residents' hell takes them. Because the government proves time and time again, as long as the money is there, it won't change anything for the better of the public. It's all about their pockets. We produce in California, we use in California. So if we're not producing it here, it's coming from another source. It's coming from overseas. Slagle says the oil industry has invested millions in innovation in California regarding renewable and sustainable energy, understanding the changing science concerning air quality, climate change, and overall health. But he says before the state or L.A. County established standard setbacks, county leaders have moved the needle toward elimination of oil drilling altogether. 
Slagle says that's short-sighted. Where do we want to produce oil? We should want to produce it where we have the toughest environmental standards in the world. Slagle says a five-year window may force an oil industry exodus, at least in terms of financial investment, almost immediately. Court argues there has already been an enormous cost associated with thousands of oil wells operating in the county. People. We have 580,000 residents living within a half mile of an oil well, and studies show it's dangerous for their health. L.A. City Council is discussing some similar proposals to L.A. counties regarding oil fields. In the meantime, everyone is still waiting on a ruling from the state regarding setbacks. So far, there's been nothing. Slagle says that the oil industry remains committed to working with communities and governments to strengthen environmental standards. But he says if the talk now is about eliminating the industry at a time where we're still relying on it for fuel and energy, then that might not leave a lot of middle now that you know the to. facts, don't get distracted by the celebrity tabloids and the fake Hollywood dreams. Just make your own choice of where to live your life. Because living in Los Angeles has its consequences. Backstory.